Hey everyone, we're going to go ahead and set up the NWA 3D A31 for Cura 3.1 and go over all the settings that you need to print some really awesome stuff. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you have to add your printer. So the first time you load Cura, it's going to pop up with an add new printer screen. But if you've already installed it, you're going to go up to where it says settings and then printer and then add printer to add the printer that you have. And we have a custom printer because we build them ourselves. And that is the NWA 3D a31 so we put the name in there but you can name it whatever you want if you want giant awesome printer works too and then we'll click add printer and then when this printer uh, screen loads up what we're going to do is we're going to set the size of our printer we're going to set our uh, print heated bed and then we're also going to set the size of our filament too so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the wet width depth and height so the width is going to be 300 the depth is also going to be 300 and the height is going to be 400 and that's about 12 inches by 12 inches by 16 inches tall and we're going to go ahead and click this heated bed right here because it has to be heated bed and then we're going to change this g-code flavor from marlin to rep wrap because that's the type of operating system that it has and then we're going to change the material diameter the last thing that we'll change is this from 2.85 to 1.75 and then once we have that typed in, we're going to go ahead and click finish. And those are our basic machine settings and everything that we need to print. So now we're going to set our settings up over here to make sure we have everything plugged in just like it should be. So the first thing we're going to do is the layer height. And 0.1 is the best that it can do. And you can see when you scroll over stuff, it's going to pop up with this window that tells you exactly what it does. And the lowest quality that it can do is going to print a lot faster. And that's 0.3. But we're going to go ahead and go medium, which is 0.2, which works great. And then the next is the shell. So that's actually the thickness of the outside part of your model. And that, we want it to be a multiple of our nozzle size, which is 0.4. So it is already, which is great. So 0.8 means two shells, and that's perfect to have a really good uh, model. But if you want to make it more dense, you can increase that by values of 0.4. Now the next is the infill. So that's the part that's filled inside of our model. So if uh, you want it to be hollow, this number would be zero, and then solid would be 100, but usually anywhere between five and 20% is great. So we'll go ahead and leave that 20%. And then we'll leave the infill steps at zero, but in the printing temperature though, we are gonna change that. We're gonna change that to 220, because that's the temperature that our high quality PLA needs to get to to be able to melt. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna change is this build plate temperature, and we're gonna change that to 50. And the maximum degrees that the build temperature can get up to is about 60, but for PLA, we want to print it at about 50 so it doesn't get too liquefied. And that will just help your prints to stick better, and also really large prints to help them so they don't warp as they're cooling. So uh, the next is the diameter. So we have a 1.75 on there, which is perfect. And then we have our, uh, our flow rate, which is 100, which is great. And our print speed, though, we're going to change that to 50 millimeters a second because that's the fastest that we recommend to print no matter what type of printer that you have. Uh, the travel speed, we can go ahead and leave that at 120. And even though this printer can print a lot faster and travel a lot faster than that, we don't want to print or travel much faster than that because th that's getting to the maximum capabilities of what this type of 3D printing can do because the layers have to actually melt together. So that's why we have to give them enough time to be able to do that. The next is this initial layer speed that we're going to change. But you don't see this value right here because this value is hidden by these little gears that you can see. And these gears, they show you all of the advanced settings. So if I click on this speed gear right here, that's where you're going to find this initial layer speed. So go ahead and check that so it shows up just like mine because we want this initial layer speed to be on here. And there's tons of other things, though, that you can go on here that are experimental and, and things that you can work on to make some really awesome prints. And you can go in and turn these on and turn these off. You can restore them to defaults right here. And you can have fun with changing all your different things. And if something gets really messed up and you can't uh, get back to it, you're actually going to be able to load the profile that we're setting up right now to reset all the default settings. So that's why we're going to save this at the end. So we'll go ahead and click close, and then we're going to change this initial layer speed right here to 15. And then now we have this initial layer speed to 15. We're going to go ahead and scroll down here a little bit, and we'll leave the cooling on. We're going to generate supports. So we'll click that. So if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate it. And everywhere means it's going to make supports even inside of your model. And just touching build plate will just make the supports that's uh, around overhangs on the, uh, the build plate itself. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this build plate adhesion, and we're going to turn the skirt on from Brim. And Brim works like suction cups around the outside part of our model, but we're going to turn the skirt on just to save some filament so it'll be some lines around there. And then we'll go ahead and leave the print sequence where it is. So these are all the settings that we've now set up for our A31. So now we want to save these so if something ever gets mixed up, 
we can go back and restore this default again. You can also find this printer profile on your SD card. So we're going to go ahead and click here on this down arrow. And then we're going to click Create Current Profile from Settings. So right here, we're going to go ahead and name this, how about Medium A31. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. So we've got them named, Medium A31. So now we know those are our settings that we're going to need to set up. And you can see also, when if you go to Import right here, that's where you can actually import the settings that are on the SD card. If something gets really messed up or something's going on, you can export profiles out from here too. Um, so this is a really useful area to be able to create different types of print profiles because when you hit Close here, what you can do is you want to make sure that your print profile is selected and also your correct material is selected. That's why we always want to make sure that PLA is selected and then we want to make sure that we're on our correct print profile and that one is checked. So once we have those set, then these are all the different settings that we would have for this printer. But if you wanted to have, maybe you had an upgraded nozzle, so you had like a 0.6 nozzle for printing in carbon fiber or something like that, or it's hardened, then you could have all those different types of settings uh, inside of here so you could switch back and forth between the different settings for maybe carbon fiber PLA or regular PLA or flexible TPU with these different profiles. So that's why these profiles are really nice. And we can always just restore them to go back to the original. So next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to load a model inside of Cura. So to load a model, we're going to click over here where it says open file. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our SD card and there's some awesome stuff on there. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, snap fit sphere right here. So this is awesome to open up and we'll click open. And then now when we open this up, we're going to see here is our sphere. And as long as it's yellow, that means it's going to print. You can click on it and you can actually move it around. I could even add more than one thing if I want to, as long as they fit inside of the build area. Remember, put this keychain on here too, then they'll be able to print. So as long as my models are in here, and as long as they're turned yellow, then they're printable. And you can even click right here where it says scale to even scale stuff to make them larger if I wanted to. So I could scale this up and make it really huge because this is a really giant printer. I can even click on these and kind of move them around a little bit. And if you want to, if you're scaling. So as I'm trying to, as I'm moving this and just holding the mouse button down, that's how we can kind of scale them and trick stuff. So you can change the percentages right here, or you can just click and hold and drag on each one of them. So I can go right here and go to just 150% if I want to, if I'm not worried about the actual size of our model. You can also click rotate right here if we want to rotate our model to be able to move it around a little bit. So we can drag on these and actually rotate them side to side to move them around. So uh, that's some really awesome stuff that you can do with these features. And I'm going to go ahead and click move back here and actually uh, physically move my model over here to the side so we can see it. Because one of the other important things about Cura is to make sure that our print orientation is exactly how we want it to be. So if we click over here where it says from solid view to layer view, we're going to actually see all the supports that it automatically generated. So over here where we check supports, where it says everywhere, we're going to see all those supports now on our model as soon as it gets it done slicing, which is what it's doing right here, and then now it's processing. So here, this turquoise and bluish color right there, those are our supports. So we don't really need to print with those supports because they're kind of in the way and they're going to be something that you have to pop off of there. And, and supports are something that um, you need to print with some models, but not every model needs it. So we can, for instance, click rotate on this one. Let's go ahead and flatten this one out and then it won't need support. So go ahead and go at 75, 90%. There we go. Whoop, a little bit too far. Went to 120. Go back to 90%. There we go. And then now that one's going to be flat and it won't have near as many supports. So we do the same thing on this one and we can click and rotate it. And if I want to go back to the solid view, I can even do that too if I want. So I can click on this one and go ahead and rotate this one to 90 degrees too. There we go. And then it moves down flat. And I'll click on this one and kind of move it back a little bit because we want our models to be a little bit separated so they're not touching each other. And then now we'll go ahead and click back to our layer view and see exactly what it's going to do with our different types of slicing. So it's getting ready to slice right here. And then now this is that slicing. So this is that third step or that second step of 3D printing where it's actually coding the model into G-code and that's what the slicing is right here and that's what Kira does. So then once it gets processed we'll actually see what each one of these have done. So now look we barely need any supports at all. Even if we scroll down here and we hold the right mouse button we can kind of move it around. So it needs supports inside the letters and inside the snap sphere here but we don't need supports anywhere else so that is a great way to save some filament. So you, to make it a lot easier to print and to save filament in the process. So once we have everything exactly how we want we're going to go ahead and click right here and we can rename it. So I can name this, uh, how about like sphere and keychain. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter. And then now we're ready to save. So I can click save to file if I want to save that G code somewhere on my computer. Or I can insert my SD card 
and I can save it directly to the SD card by clicking Save to Removable Drive. So when I click Save to Removable Drive, it's going to pop up to where I can save it, and I can even eject it from here right, uh, right away, and then once I eject it, I'll be able to take that SD card and then put that in my A31, and then using the control screen, I'll go to Print from SD and pick my print. So I hope this was helpful for you guys to learn how to run Cura for the NWA3D A31, and have fun 3D printing, and good luck!